We're here with a very inspiring figure, author of How to Stop Overthinking, and inventor and mastermind behind the Daily Boom, Boom. Mr. Luke John Harrison. How are you doing, mate? Great. What a wonderful introduction. I know. Inspiring figure. <laughs> inspiring figure. No, inspiring well, figure. We've watched, we've watched Luke's videos for quite a while now, and he's always like inspired us first thing in the morning with his burpees and challenges and all sorts of stuff. So we're here to talk a bit about his uh, new book today, How to Stop Overthinking. Um, so why don't you tell us a bit about what inspired you to actually write the book in the first place? Yeah, um, right. So to be honest, mate, there's a, a lot of things have inspired us over the years. Struggled with anxiety, overthinking, overwhelm, fear, everything else, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's an accumulation of all those years of thoughts and pushing through barriers, through going through hard times, coming out more prosperous at the end, you know quitting a job I hated, getting through several failed relationships, fucking up time and time and time mm -hmm. again. And it was kind of, getting all this stuff out on paper was quite therapeutic. But the main drive was to help people, was anybody that's ever struggled with overthinking, self-doubt, like, this is the kind of book that I wanted to read 10 years ago. Yeah. But unfortunately it wasn't in my life, no. you know? But this, this kind of movement, if you will, of, of what people helping people with mental health issues and things like that is becoming very popular right now in a good way. Like there's a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon saying, you know what, it's talked about more freely yeah. now, if you will. Because 10 years ago, like back when, you know, back back when was just uh, even 15 years ago, it's, it's only really the past sort of five years, I think that it's come to light and there's so much more mental health awareness and things like that. And people talking about uncomfortable shit as well. Um, so for me, overall, the, the main reason was to help myself, obviously, to get this all out and say, this is, this is what I've been struggling with. Here's some stories, here's some tools and tricks, but to help others yeah. who've sabotaged and who worry with the self-doubt and the criticism that they get from others and things like that. So the main focus and driver was to help people, yeah. quite basically. So when you said you've been through a lot of stuff in the past, do you think that makes the book more relatable to everyone else that reads it? Like they can fully like embrace the... It's, see, uh, there's a lot of work we've done with mindfulness. I yep. don't know whether you ever yeah, look yeah. into that sort of stuff, like yep. the meditation and stuff, because I know a lot of people like that watch the videos and um, people that I've talked to, they struggle with that. There are constant chain of thoughts that go through the mind. They don't know how to control them, and they yes. feel like there is... The people that are just calm are naturally calm. There's yeah. no way to learn that. There's no way to calm the thoughts down. But they're wrong. There is a way to calm the thoughts mm -hmm. down. So yeah. if someone said to you, look, I just can't control the thoughts I just can't stop overthinking where would you recommend they start at the start <laughs> now that, that sounds ridiculous right but it's literally right okay what is the main thought that's consuming you at the moment because most people have a main thought it'll be it'll be masked in certain different ways so for example it'll be like I'm stressed today right I'm worried today right what you worried over I don't think I, I can get enough done why can't you get enough done because I don't think I'm capable Right, okay, what happens if you're not capable? If you don't feel you're capable, well, if you, and if you dig deeper, it's kind of like that the main thought is, I don't believe I'm worth it a lot of the time. I don't mm. believe I'm worth it. I don't believe I'm valuable enough. I don't believe I can do this. I have little self-worth, belief in myself. That's where most of the overthinking comes from, is a lack of self-belief. Mm. You know, always doing for others, very seldom doing for themselves, always putting others first, which is they believe, and we've been brought up, to say is a good thing, you know, give to others, which is very good and you shouldn't be too selfish, mm -hmm. but you have to be a little bit selfish in order to serve others properly. Because once by the time you give so much to other people, there's nothing left for you. No. You're knackered, you're pissed off, you're ratty, you, you, you don't look after yourself, you eat the wrong foods, you never exercise, you never, yeah, you know, exactly. when you talk about mindfulness as such, for a lot of people like, People have no idea a lot of the time. They always think it's just hairy, fairy, woo, meditation, bullshit, which it's not. Mindfulness is what is basically having a better mindset. Yeah. More than anything, really. I mean, there's so many different ways to do it. It's just this is becoming a bit of a buzzword right now, mindfulness. Because mm. mind Almost like a bandwagon, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, well, the thing is, the word itself, mindfulness, doesn't actually sound that appealing. Like, my mind's full, I just need to clear it and get to, you know what I mean? But it actually doesn't mean that, it means the opposite. It means being full of good things and positive thoughts and positive actions and being able to cope with stress easier, things like that. So, in terms of your question, I know I went off a little bit there. It's okay. But I think for anybody struggling, you have to start at the start of getting clear where you are because a lot of people will just mask it with sedation. They will choose alcohol, drugs, porn, whatever is, is their vice. Mm. They will choose 
those things to distract from the current reality, the actual truth of it. It's, it's, it's about seeing things as they are, not worse than they are. Yeah. So that's why people overthink and they get scared and fearful because they have a problem. And in their head, it's so much bigger than it actually is. Whereas if you were to put it down on paper and assess it a little bit more, right, what's the thought? Okay, is the thought true? What, what do you see in this thought? How do you react? You know, that kind of thing. It would be a lot more effective than just try. Like, there's not one particular way that works for everybody. Everybody has their way of, of dealing with stuff and coping with stuff. But a lot of the time, it does just boil down to telling the fucking truth. Hmm. Being honest, like, I'm struggling. Uh, this is what I'm thinking about at the minute. These are the thoughts I'm having. Can you give us a sense of direction? You know, because a lot of people just say, like, they'll cover their eyes. You know, and they'll cover it's the like rears. Living and in just, denial, as yes, it? like absolutely. When you, when you said covering it up with alcohol and drugs and whatever else, it's a it's a mask to hide the feelings. Yes. And the more it's like it's almost like I've I've said this before, like a spring, like the more pressure you put on the spring, eventually it just pops yeah. back up. Exactly.